Hello, uh, my name is Louis Pesono. I am a uh, town of Cumberland resident. Uh, this is my second time here uh, testifying, uh, so thank you for the opportunity uh, to let my voice be heard. Um, first, I want to oppose Senate Bill 2835 that restricts uh, magazine capacities to 10 rounds. Um, if you do a search for deadliest mass shootings in the U.S. history, you'll usually find a list of the top 30. Um, and to help understand what we're actually facing, I just want to go over a couple of facts on some at the top. Uh, number one, 2007 Virginia Tech, 32 people were dead. Uh, the shooter used two handguns, one with a 10-round capacity like the one being proposed and one with a 50-round capacity. He had 19 total magazines with him. Uh, skipping over to number five, in 1966 University of Texas um, shooting, 18 people dead. Six of his uh, multiple weapons were all under 10 round capacities. Uh, recently, number six, San Bernardino terrorist attack, 14 people killed. Uh, somebody already stated it, but I think it needs to be said again. The shooters used 30 round magazines in a state that has uh, banned uh, magazine capacities of over 10 rounds for, all, for uh, the past 26 years. And I think that really drives uh, the point home that you know, that's evidence enough to oppose this bill for me personally. Uh, number 10, Columbine, 12 people dead. Uh, one of the shooters had a five round pump action shotgun along with a nine millimeter rifle for which he carried 13 of these proposed uh, 10 round magazines. And uh, the list goes on about that. Um, moving on, I wanna oppose Senate Bill 2761 that bans concealed carrying in schools. <laughs> Look, uh, I have a five year old beautiful baby boy at home um, who's in kindergarten. Uh, he's my everything. I can't imagine not having him in my life. And it, I still get anxiety every day that I drop him off in school. I, and I'm pretty sure that every parent in here probably feels the same way after recent events. Um, so if I thought that for a second that this proposed bill would keep him at all any safer, I would jump all over it. Unfortunately, what it does is it creates a, uh, a solution for a problem that just doesn't exist. Um, talking facts real quick, the undeniable fact is that the only thing that stops these madmen from continuing their atrocities is when they're confronted with a firearm, um, which almost always leads to the shooter committing suicide. And for that reason, uh, Lo and I kind of oppose this uh, uh, bill. Um, I also agree with just about everything that everybody has said in opposition uh, to this bill. Um, moving forward, I'd like to show my uh, strong support for uh, Senate Bill 2647 in regards to concealed permits. And I just want to give uh, my brief experience in my, person, in my town of Cumberland. In the past year, uh, there's been three different applications uh, with three different sets of standards, um, with the latest falling in line more with this bill. Uh, to me, in regards to licensing and uh, permitting in general, I strongly think that any process in place should be both repeatable and the outcome should be predictable. The issue is that right now we don't have that. We have 39 applications with 39 standards, and a majority following the incorrect standard of the Attorney General when they have their own standard under 114711. Um, some are adding tons of extra requirements. Uh, for example, psychiatric evaluations, like somebody said, which are no longer available uh, to ordinary citizens. Fees that are over $40, which is against the law. Um, Medical records, medical release records that are uh, most likely um, in violation of HIPAA laws. I'm not a lawyer, but, um, you know, I have with me, I brought an example of one town uh, application that in one of their personal release is asking for, quote, uh, consent for full and complete disclosure for records of financial and credit institutions, including records of deposits, withdrawals, uh, checking and savings account balances, loans, credit reports, public utility companies, and salary records. I guess um, I really don't understand what anybody would need with any of that, of that kind of financial information um, to determine uh, applicant suitability. Um, 
And as you can imagine, this really does, this widespread of processes um, is effectively making what we already have under 1147.11, it's, it makes it a discretionary, uh, discriminatory scheme, which is far from its intent. Um, to Senator uh, Lombardi's point, um, you mentioned about uh, Rhode Island politics and how it's, a, you know, this licensing is a byproduct of it. And I do agree with that. Uh, my only comment on that is that, yes, there are 39 different towns, but there's only one statute that they all should be falling under, you know. So, uh, but thank you for your comments, and I totally agree with that. Um, but just to drive that point home, there's towns right now that don't, will not even conduct a background check for somebody to join a rod and gun club. Um, let alone even hand out an application for a carry permit. Uh, I think this is both wrong and it's a kind of a disservice to uh, some of these, uh, you know, taxpaying citizens. And that kind of behavior really highlights the need for this bill. Um, it's, it's for me. It's a little bit hard to understand how something uh, so clearly written in eleven forty seven eleven has been allowed to for years be misinterpreted, uh, you know, uh, blatantly ignored and, and abused, even after having major Supreme Court decisions that have um, clarified the duties of all these licensing authorities. Um, along with that, the bill does uh, outline some reasonable timelines. Um, there's some great uh, police departments right now that are processing after receiving applications and making decisions within two weeks. But we still have towns that we, you don't hear anything for upwards of a year. I think that's pretty unacceptable. And uh, lastly, uh, the bill clears up some language um, and defines suitability and, and adds in some things about uh, lawful reasons. Um, and I think that that really does provide the one set of criteria that's needed um, so that it negates some of these arbitrary requirements, like I mentioned, that uh, the licensing authorities just happen to... Uh, you know, tack onto their process based on some bias. Um, and just to reiterate something that somebody else said, the statute is, as it's written, shall issue. Um, it is not may issue. Um, so this isn't seeking to switch it from may to shall. It's already shall. But I don't have to tell you guys that because you already know. And that's all that I have, and I thank you for your time. Any questions or comments? Send them at well, not a not a question, but the, uh, the comment I had. Uh, I'm, I'm a retired school administrator, so I was in charge of uh, the lockdowns and the shelter in place. I was in charge of all of that. And and I and I say say that to say this. You know, one of the uh, examples that we used, and certainly working with the Providence Police and the Providence Fire Department, was the Columbine case. And as you was given the history of the different shootings, whether it was West Virginia, uh, excuse me, Virginia Tech and, and whatnot, times, sadly, times have changed a little bit in the sense that um, students are taught no longer to be passive and hide under the desk. They're taught to be aggressive. So sadly, I had to tell the kids, if something happens like that, all the books you have in the desk, you start at this. 30 kids in the classroom and you get uh, 30 some odd books coming at you with a with a five or 10 round magazine and you uh, at least I got at least I got a shot to me uh, you know uh, growing up in the hood I got a little education over the years but uh, growing up in the hood if, if uh, I'm gonna make my move as soon as you run out of your magazine and so if there's if there's 25 to 30 kids throwing books now, if you now, I might not have a shot with, with me to the, for the 50, 50 round magazine, but maybe with a five or a ten. But sadly, it's it's just so sad that that the times have changed and the norms have changed, where our kids no longer can be passive. We have to train them sure. to don't hide under the desk, but to, but to be aggressive. But I guess that's the times we're in, and it's just it's just so sad. But I, I just differ a little bit on the points that's made about those those high capacity magazines. So from my perspective, I have a better shot with the lower capacity because in that break, you know, somebody can make a move. Two or three of us can make a move. So that that's that's my assessment of it. But I I do appreciate the testimony. Thank you, Senator Lombardi. 
Louis, I just want to comment, your five-year-old, that anxiety, mine at 25, and they live in New York now, that anxiety never goes away, and they call that being a great dad. Awesome. Thank you.